we are on day three of 3.4 dividing. So we did long division day one, we did synthetic division day two, and now this is really and truly, you guys, this should actually be like 3.4 C um, because we're now going to use the remainders and we're going to use the factors to actually work on a real polynomial that has a ton of terms, okay? Because look at this last page. Look at number six. Let's say that I said, you guys, I want you to factor that and I want you to tell me all the parentheses that are the factors and it's to the fourth power and it starts with a nine. That's hard. But today I'm gonna to teach you a technique so that you can factor a large polynomial and know all the parentheses and the factors. So first thing I wanna do is I want to practice just Friday, long, I'm sorry. Synthetic division. So I'll come on over here. Okay, good. If I think that x plus four is a factor, that means that if I'm going to divide it synthetically, I'm going to actually put the zero, the zero is negative four there. And then I put my terms, one x to the third plus one x squared minus four x plus 41. One, one, negative four, 41, right? I had a student come into student support on Friday and I used colors and I did some other techniques and they really benefited from synthetic division. So I wanna do that for you as well. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. If you'll recall, we bring down the first term, right? Then, we multiply by our factor here. One times negative four, negative four. Then I add plus sign, right? I add there and I'll get negative three. Then I multiply negative three times negative four and I'll get positive 12. Right? Then I add negative four plus 12 and I would get eight. Then I multiply eight times negative four, negative 32. Adding, well, 41 minus 32, you know, that's fine. I got a nine. Vinay, yes. No, Mark, that was an accident. So now, since my polynomial was to the third degree, my answer is going to be one degree less x squared x. There's my constant. This is my remainder. Right? Here we go. Uh, 1x squared minus 3x plus 8 and 9 over the original like parentheses factor x plus 4. Okay. So that's just a refresher. That's how I do synthetic division. Now I'm going to go and it says find f of negative four. Find if I plugged in negative four into my original, into my original. Negative four to the third plus negative four squared minus four times negative four plus 41. So now I'm gonna show you that when I plug in my fact, my zero, negative four, I get negative 64 plus 16 plus 16 plus 41. Hey, hey, it's nine. Oh, I can't highlight because it'll bleed through the other side. Darn it. Okay, look, good. So my point is your remainder 
when you plug it back into your polynomial, will get you, um, I'm sorry, your zero of negative four, your negative four, when you plug it back into your original polynomial, will get you your remainder. So now you're gonna do number two on your own. That's your homework, right? Evens, yeah. So here's the remainder theorem. Sorry. The remainder theorem. If a polynomial function f of x is divided by x minus c, where you know c is just a number, four, five, one, whatever, then the remainder is f of c. And remember, it was just nine. We just did it up there where we got the nine, right? Like f of f of negative four equaled nine, right? That's a good thing to write. F of negative four equaled nine. This was the, well, we don't worry about that. Okay. Using synthetic division to evaluate a function is called synthetic substitution. I have to tell you guys something. Um, my lights have just flickered twice. I don't think my power is going to go out, but that's the signs, that's the indication that power might go out if the lights flicker and like means there's something going on. But the wind, I would, are you guys all hoping now that my power goes out? Don't do that. Don't, don't be mean, come on. You already had like a free day on Friday because of the internet. So, um, not, not today, friends, not today. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually practice plugging or using um, synthetic division. And I'm going to be given the factor of negative three. So I'm gonna do number three right now. And I'm gonna find the remainder. So our whole job right now is to find the remainder. So negative three is what I put here because it was not in parentheses form. It was not in like a factor form with the parentheses. This would have been x plus three, right? But they told us that it was negative three. So I'm going to just use negative three. Here we go. My coefficients are one, eight, 12, negative seven, negative 14. Right. Yes, sir. Um, for the for the warm up part, like num letter A, um, it says x plus four, and then in the the square thing we put negative four. But then, for, how come for this one we use negative three? Because up here, see my pencil. I was told the factored form, which is in a parenthesis. Down here, let me try and get both of them on the screen. Right here, look at my finger. They told me what the zero was. This is called the zero. So they already solved and got negative three. The reason that they call it C, it should be an X guys. It should be an X. The reason that they call it C is because the mathematical definition for remainder theorem has a C because C is the, um, you know, it's like A, B, C when you have a um, standard form. So the mathematicians way back when decided that C would be the variable that would represent the remainder for this math topic. So really and truly it would be X equals negative three, but the C is, the, is because it's a, um, we're, we're writing the true mathematical definition right here. So, C, it means just a number, but okay, negative you. three is after I put X plus three equals zero, I get negative three. So I'll do one more time with my colors, red and green. Christmas, Merry Christmas, everybody. 
Bring down the first term, one. Multiply, negative three times one. Put it here though, right? Add. Plus five. Five times negative three, multiply, negative 15. Add. 12 plus negative 15, 12 minus 15, either way, you get a negative three. Multiply. Negative three times negative three, positive nine. Add. I get a two. So windy outside where I live. Like crazy. Multiply. Two times negative three. Negative six. Add. Negative 20. My remainder is negative 20. That's all I need to do. I'm not even going to write down my new leftover polynomial. I'm just going to write down the remainder. Find the remainder. The remainder theorem. Remainder is negative 20. I'm going to go to number five. All right, C is negative five. It's basically X is negative five. That would be like X plus five equals zero. One of my factors is X plus five. The zero is negative five. Negative five is the number that I put for my synthetic division right here. So this is like, you guys know this, it's whatever, same thing. All I wanna find is the remainder, however, yeah? My coefficients are, ooh, 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 I gotta show you something. X to the fourth, one, plus five X to the third, minus 19, negative 19, minus 23 X. There's no constant, there's no number at the end, but I still need to include it because every power must be included. Every power, if there's a missing exponent or a missing power, you fill it in. There was a missing constant, which is X to the zero power, it is, you can't forget that. I'm done with my um, beautiful red and green. Okay, do you wanna see how fast I can do it? Maybe you can do this fast too. One times negative five, negative five, add zero. Zero times negative five, zero. Negative 19 plus zero, negative 19. Negative 19, plus negative five is 95. Negative 23 plus 95 is 72. 72 times negative five is negative 360. Zero plus negative 360 is negative 360. You guys can use a calculator, by the way. My remainder is negative 360. I'm just waiting for you to catch up. Number seven is the same, you guys. I just, I'll, I'll, I'll set it up for you, but I'm not gonna do it. Eight, negative five, zero, X to the power of one is missing. X to the power of one is missing. Zero X was missing and then negative one. But I'm not gonna do it, okay? Because it's just the same thing and I ugh, don't wanna waste the time. It's not a waste, it's just, it's a little extra, extra, and you don't really need to, need to do extra, extra when you get it, you know? Okay. 
Um, six, would you like me to take eight off? Because I didn't do seven. Would you like me to take eight off? No one's responding. You want to keep eight? You want, you want to do eight? Take it off. Oh, okay. All right. So how does this relate to real life? Okay. This is a situation where you would find a need for this. The number of tickets sold during the Oakdale High School football season can be modeled by the equation f of x equals x cubed minus 14x squared plus 72x plus 68, where x is the number of games played. Use the remainder theorem, you're just going to do synthetic division, to find the number of tickets sold during the seventh game of the season. That means that x equals seven, which would have been like an x minus seven equals zero. If I had a factor, like basically means um, they're telling us what value to plug in the seventh game. So here we go, seven. My coefficients are one x cubed negative 14 x squared, 72 x and 68. You're gonna need a calculator for this one. These numbers are kind of hairy, large, not fun. Okay, one times seven is seven. Add negative 14 plus seven, is negative seven. Multiply negative seven times seven, negative 49. 72 take away 49 is 23. Multiply 23 times seven, 161. 68 plus 161 is 229, 229 tickets were sold during the seventh game. Questions so far? You will do 10. Oh, for 10, one minute, X equals 60 seconds, 60. Okay. Questions so far, if you don't speak up and you're confused, that's really just hurting you. Miss Grant. Yep. Wait. So for ten, we all we just have to put a zero for the constant, right? You do. Uh, point six, ten, and zero. Zero point six, ten, zero. Please, please, like tell me, guys. The silence sometimes is just really not good because I know I'm not that good of a teacher that every single kid gets it. Like there's gotta be, you know, I'm, all right, something new to talk to you about. So I need your attention back here. Now I'm gonna teach you how to look at a long polynomial and figure out what are the parentheses that make up that long polynomial? What are the factors? So I'm going to, um, for my first two problems, be given some choices. And again, 
I need to try it out and be like, well, if X plus one is what they gave me, that means negative one is what I divide by. If X minus five is a factor they give me to check, that means five is the number I divide by. If X plus six is the factor they give me, that means that negative six is the number I divide by. So now I have three to try. I have to do these all by myself. I have to do three synthetic division problems in this space right here. You're gonna need to write small, 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 okay? So the first one I'm gonna try is negative one, right? And I'm writing small as should you. This thing's totally bugs. I don't know how to get rid of it. Okay. Write your coefficients. Ooh, zero x squared. Notice how there's no x squared. One, zero, negative 31, and 30. There was no second power, so I put a zero in its place. Bring down the first term. And I probably even did that too much space. Like, I don't need to write big at all. All right, synthetic division, here we go. One times negative one, negative one. Zero plus negative one, negative one. Negative one times negative one, one. This is so easy right now. Negative 30 plus one, negative 30. Negative 30 times negative one, positive 30. 30 plus 30 is 60. My remainder is 60. That's not good because let me tell you something up here that I actually forgot to write. When I'm given a factor x minus c of a polynomial, x minus c is a factor if and only if, uh, if and only if is called a biconditional and you learned that in geometry and there's an abbreviation IFF. If and only if f of c, the remainder is zero. So I want a zero remainder. I want a zero remainder. I want a zero remainder. If I have a zero remainder, that means it's a factor. A zero remainder means that this parentheses x minus c is a factor. I just did negative one, which is x plus one. And it gave me a remainder of 60. That's not good. I don't like that. So no, x plus one is not a factor. All right. Now I'm gonna do my next suggested factor, x minus five or five because x plus one is not a factor. So let's try the other two, x minus five, put a five here. One, zero, negative 31 and 30. I'm gonna look at you guys. I wanna see what you're doing. And I don't want anyone's camera to be off. Oh, Sean's in Vegas. That's awesome. That looks like something, something exciting, Sean. Okay, Max, Christian, I don't know why your cameras are off. Ian, I don't know why your camera's off. Fix that, please. Okay. 
Now I'm going to do synthetic division with the five. Again, you can use calculators if the numbers get big, for sure. For sure. One, bring down the first term. Then start multiplying and adding. Multiply, add, multiply, add. Multiply. One times five is five. Add. Zero plus five is five. Five times five is 25. Negative 31 plus 25 is negative six. Negative six times five is negative 30. Hey, 30 plus negative 30 has a remainder of zero. Yes. X minus five is a factor. So I'll put the check mark. Uh, last negative six. One, zero, negative 31, 30. Can I point something out, you guys? Can I point something out? The constant of my polynomial is 30. You're going to have to notice, I hope you do, that these numbers all go into 30. 1 goes into 30, 5 goes into 30, and 6 goes into 30. But is it positive 5 or negative 5? Is it positive 6 or negative 6? OK, so please notice that the last number, the constant of my polynomial, you've got to pick numbers that like would go into it. Maybe, you know, 30, I could have picked 10 or 3. So we're going to do that actually like in another lesson coming up where you have to find like, is 3 a factor? Is 6? Is 5? Is 10? Is 15? 15 goes into 30. OK. Anyways, that's like the next lesson. Here we go. Bring down the first term. One times negative six is negative six. Add. Zero plus negative six is negative six. Um, negative six times negative six is positive 36. Negative 31 plus 36 is five. Five times negative six is negative 30. 30 plus negative 30, yay, zero. Yes. X plus six is a factor. Okay. Okay. You'll have to do number two on your own. Now we're on to the next thing. Factoring and finding what the, like, I am told on number three that X plus three is one of the factors. I don't know what the other ones are though. So what I need to do is I need to do synthetic division and then I'm going to figure out what the other factors might be. And let me show you. So I am told that, and I'm just going to write this on the side. You'll see in a second why. So X plus three is one of the factors. Well, I need to know like what else is a factor. So I'm going to use this synthetic division and I'm told negative three is for sure one of the zeros. Negative three is one of the zeros. They tell me, you will always be told one of them in this type of problem. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through, ooh, I only have 10 minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through. None of the powers are missing. One, three, negative four, negative 12. 
Okay. Synthetic division, go. Bring down the first term. Negative three times one is negative three. Add, I get zero. Negative three times zero is zero. Add, I get negative four. Negative four times negative three is positive 12. Add, my remainder is zero. Yes, I like that. Let's see, since my remainder is zero, I'm actually going to write out the leftovers in a polynomial form. This is what we did in synthetic division on um, Friday. Since my exponent of my original was to the third power cubed, this is gonna be my x squared. This is gonna be my x. This is gonna be my constant. So here's what I got. One x squared, nothing x to the first, minus four. That means that this is left over, x squared minus four. So I was just able to find out another binomial. And now I'm gonna look and say, well, I got x plus three, that's good. But this x squared minus four, can I do anything there? So I'm gonna factor it. Always just, you know, drop down the x plus three, it's included, it's still there. x squared minus four, x plus two, x minus two. So again, I'm going to be left with a polynomial or a binomial or a trinomial or something. And then I'm going to factor that and go further to get my parentheses. So I'm fully done. This is fully done. My x's are, my zeros are negative three, negative two, and positive two. Because you know, if you set it equal to zero, you would solve for x. I am for sure gonna do another one like this. Uh, I can't, I have time. We're gonna go to number five on the back side. Okay, I am told that x minus seven is one of my factors. So I am going to do seven, okay? And synthetic division. So write down your coefficients, two, negative seven, negative 53 and 28. So I'm doing synthetic division. You can absolutely use a calculator if you need to. Drop down the first term. Um, <clears throat> two times seven is 14. Add negative seven plus 14 is seven. Seven times seven is 49. Negative 53 plus 49 is negative four. Negative four times seven is negative 28. Yeah, zero remainder, I love it. So now, I have, let me write over here on the side. This was my original. 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 53x plus 28. I know that x minus 7 is one of them. What's now left over? Well, since this was a cubed, I'm going to then say that this is my x squared. This is my x and this is my constant. That trinomial is also part of the factors, but it's not like quite done because 2x squared plus 7x minus 4 needs itself to be factored. And I will just tell you due to time purposes, it is 2x minus 1 and it is x plus 4. So I need to factor this. Right?
Now I can write down what my zeros are. Positive seven, positive one half, negative four. Yeah. So we're going like extra, extra right now. Questions? Why, uh, why is it one half? Because <clears> two <throat> X minus one equals zero is two X equals one, X equals one half. That's why when I said the terms equal to zero, I get one half. Um, I rarely keep you till 11.04, but today I am. Makes you appreciate those days that are not straight up. Okay. They told me that X plus five is one of the factors, which means negative five is a zero. Oh, there's no constant. There's no like, X to the zero power. So I need to make sure I put that. Three, five, negative 42, 40, and zero. All right, bring down the first term and go for it. Multiply, add, multiply, add, right? Three times negative five is negative 15. That's negative 10. Negative 10 times negative five is 50. Negative 42 plus 50 is eight. Eight times negative five is negative 40. That's zero. I'm gonna add negative five times zero is zero. Leaves me with three X to the third minus 10 X squared plus eight X plus zero. So. Let's do what I've been doing the past two problems. Write down your original three X to the fourth plus five X to the third minus 42 X squared plus 40 X. I know that X plus five is one of my for sure, for sure factors. What I don't know is now I got to factor this. 3x to the third minus 10x squared plus 8x. I have to factor that. Do you see anything, anything I can do? Where would I begin? If I, if I gave you this problem in just like a normal worksheet and I said factor it, Mary, what would I do? Um, well, for one, you would, one of the parentheses would include three X itself. Oh, there's actually something before that. There's a, a something I can do. Oh, I, oh, oh, um, sorry. Um, you can and separate the X. Yeah, GCF, X. Watch this. X plus five. I got to keep writing like what I know. I have to keep writing X plus five. Now factor out an X. Three X squared minus 10 X plus eight. Yeah. Now factor this. Ready guys? I'm just going to tell you. Three X minus four parentheses X minus two. That trinomial became three X minus four and X minus two. Now the proper ordering when there's like an X alone, X, X plus five, three X minus four, X minus two, all equal to zero, yeah? I can hear somebody's what? Are you watching TV while you're listening to math? Watching a YouTube video? Okay, set them all equal to zero. This one right here, X equals zero. Like if I set this X out alone, it'll get X equals zero. I'll also get negative five. 
I'll get four thirds. I will get two. Maybe, maybe Mary or Vinay, it's you, but somebody's, I'm still hearing like a cartoony type thing. I'm muted. Mm. Well, thank you, someone. Okay, there's my four zeros. That's where if I graph this, they would cross the x-intercept, x-axis. Okay, your homework is the evens, all right? I am right, right up on schedule where I need to be. I do need you to stay for one minute because I have a student absent. And I got to figure out who it is real quick. Let me stop the recording, obviously.